Hi, welcome to another Animation Notes tutorial. This one is going to be rather easy to put together, but I think it creates interesting, cool-looking results. And after I asked if anyone would be interested in this tutorial on the YouTube community page of my channel, and so many people said yes, here we go. So the other day I saw a design of a company logo which used the halftone effect as a design feature. Halftone is this way of creating grayscale by printing smaller or larger dots of black ink. And by viewing that from a distance where we cannot see the individual dots anymore, we see lighter gray where there are smaller dots and darker gray where there are larger dots. This has been used for printing photos in newspapers since forever and really any laser or inkjet printer uses a similar approach to create shades of colors. Anyway, I thought how can I create a halftone effect in Blender and using animation notes this is really not difficult. If you have seen my previous videos in this series then you might already have an idea how to get it done. Anyway, let's get started. Here is Blender 2.8 and first I delete everything. So basically what we need are two things. The first thing is we need some sort of representation of the image that we want to use. And then the second part is we use animation nodes to create the different sized dots. So first image, I'm going to add a mesh grid. And for the grid settings, I'm going to use 50 by 50, which gives us 2,500 vertices to work with. For the animation that you saw before, I used a grid of 100 by 100, but that slows down the viewport quite a bit. So here I'm just going to use 50 by 50. So when we go into edit mode, we have this sort of grid. And the first thing I'm going to do right away is go to UV editing, go to top view and hit U and select project from view bounds which puts all of the vertices on my UV map inside of this square. Now I just hit A to select everything and scale it down just a little bit so that my vertices are inside. Let me open the image that I will use right away, uh, which is going to be this one that I downloaded from um, Pixabay, I think. And you can see I turned it into black and white with Photoshop and I made it square, so it's easier for our square grid, but of course you can do any other shape or aspect ratio. Right, so this is our UV map. Now back to our 3D view. How do we get the image information, the grayscale information from the image usable inside of Blender? And the easiest way that I found, maybe there is an easier way, and if you know one, then please write it down in the comments. But all I did was add a modifier displace modifier then create a new texture and click this little button to go to the texture tab here open that same image or maybe I can pick it from here yep and then we get this sort of uh, displacement of the grid based on the image using the UV map so if I look at it from top view it already looks like the image on a grid of 50 by 50 pixels. Okay. So now if we look at this from side view, we can actually move our grid up on G, C, 0.5 so that the top is up here where it's one blender unit or one meter up. And then the black, like the lips and the hair, is down here at uh, the location zero. So we have values between zero and one. We now have the brightness information of the image on our grid. Basically what we can do now is hide this grid and just use the information, the C information, the height information to size our dots. So next we need sort of a dot. Uh, for the other anim animation, I used a hexagon, but for this one, I'm just gonna use, I don't know, like 10 vertices, something that's almost a circle. 
and in edit mode I will just fill it to give it a face and right away I will add a new material and just to keep it simple for this tutorial I'm going to make it emission black and I will make the world white okay so when we go to rendered view without overlays if we look at it from top view we have a dot okay hide the dot and now we will go to animation nodes create a new node tree and using animation nodes we will now place and scale the dots so that we get the halftone image showing up over here Right, to get the mesh information, the, the data from the grid, we need the mesh input node. And we will plug the grid in here. And of course we have to take use modifiers because the modifier on the grid is what displaces the grid based on the grayscale value on the brightness value of the image. So we need the modifiers. And we take a mesh info node, rip apart this mesh into its components, and then we use the vertices to place the dots and to scale them. So we need a whole bunch of those dots, and we get those with an object instancer. We take the circle, we just call it dot. And how many of those do we need? Well, the same amount as the grid has vertices. And we can just plug that in here. Animation nodes gives us a get length node automatically. So now we have 2,500 dots all in here in this collection. And now to place and scale them, as per usual, we will use a subprogram loop. We need an iterator for the vector list, which uh, is going to be the location of the vertex of the grid. And then of course we need the dots. Oops, I mean object list. Okay, so here we plug in the dots and here we plug in the locations. Let's invoke this loop. The vertices of the grid uh, gives us the locations. And here are all the dots. And now inside of this loop, first we can separate the location vector. So this is the location. Okay. And we will use the X and the Y. To place the dot, so we need a object uh, transform output. We want to place the dot location x y c and use this location now let me just make the dot visible go into edit mode and scale it down a lot even more so we get this pattern and we can see you know we have one dot for each vertex of the grid. Okay, now all we have to do is scale the dots according to the C information of the vertex of the grid. Okay, so here this C information is going to be used for the scale. So I'm going to scale it on the X, the Y, but not the C and plug that in here. And we get a vector from value node and you can already see that we get this result which is now inverted because wherever the image is black remember the grid is being pushed down on the c-axis to zero so now where the image is black we get a size of zero or almost zero so we need to invert this can easily do that with a number map range 
and we map an input between 0 and 1 to a value of 1 and 0. And now we have a halftone representation of our image. Now with these values here, we can also change the maximum and minimum size. So we could say an input of 1, which is white, should be at least 0 0.1 size. So we have no dots that are totally invisible. So even the white ones here have a little bit of size to them. Or we leave that at zero, so they disappear. Also, we can make the black dots a little larger if we want to, like this. And that's basically everything we have to do to get the grayscale effect onto our 2500 dots. Now, of course, I can go back into the dots, hide this for a second, and add a solidify modifier, make it a little longer, like this. And now we don't just have a two-dimensional dot, we have a three-dimensional sort of a pin. If I hide that again, go back in here and enable copy full object, which also copies the thickness now from the modifier. Now we have the dots when we look at them from the top view and we have all sorts of pins when we look at it at an angle. Okay, so this is what that looks like. And now of course we can also use the C information to move the pins on the C axis. So if I plug that in here, we get this mess. That doesn't really look like anything when we look at it like this, but as soon as we rotate to top view, we get our half tone image again. And we can play with this even further. We could move the C axis up and down, have an animation with a number wiggle node. All we really need now is to add a camera and create the animation that you saw at the beginning. Now what I also did in, the, in my rendering was, since I only had hexagons here, I gave each pin, each dot, a random rotation, which can be done very easily by enabling the C rotation and then add a random number node where the index goes into the seed, so you get a different random number for each dot. And we want to rotate between zero and something like 90 degrees. Then we need a rotation combine node, plug the number into the C, use degrees, because here we said zero to 90 degrees, plug that into the rotation. And then we have random rotation on the dots, which is not really visible with those uh, dots that have 10 vertices, but you get the idea. Now let me also just add some random movement on the C axis. We take a number wiggle, plug the animation frame into the evolution node also take the index for a random seed here and then take a number math node in the c axis up here and multiply our random number onto that well, if i pull up a timeline here and i move the timeline, you can see that all the pins are moving on the C-axis randomly. But over here, where we're looking at it from top down, the image is always just the image. Right, so you can have sort of a cool camera movement through this mess here while the animation is playing and moving these pins. And you don't really know what it is when you look at it like this. 
and then you rotate your camera to look at it from top view and you get the halftone image. Let me just add a camera here that is already placed like this. Move it up on the C axis and I want to show you something here. If we set this to camera view, we can see here that we have a perspective camera. And in order for this to look right, we have to move the camera up and far out and then increase the focal length to something like 500 so that we basically lose the perspective. Or the other thing we can do is we can set the type to orthographic. And then moving it on the C-axis doesn't really change anything. So you can place that wherever you want. You have to use this orthographic scale here to zoom in. So now you have the perfect orthographic view without any perspective and then you get a perfect gray scale or a half tone image. In my animation, I used a perspective camera for uh, flying through the dots in the beginning and then I moved it far up on the C-axis at a focal length of 500, just like I showed you before. Okay, you can see here, this is not very complicated. And I like this effect, I think it looks cool. If you want it to be darker, you can always increase this uh, size here to get bigger black dots. Maybe that's quite a bit too big. And now the last thing that you saw in my video was I animated this. So I had a movie clip instead of a single image. And that's really very easy to do. All you have to do is go to your grid and the texture that you use here to displace the grid, you can see here that it can be an image sequence or a movie. So what I did was I filmed my wife, I took this shot into a video editor, increased the contrast and rendered it out in black and white in a square format. And then I used the image sequence here to displace the grid. Right? So when you have an image sequence plugged in here, the grid moves according to the movie that you plug in here. And then every frame animation nodes gets executed whenever a frame changes and repositions and rescales all those uh, dots or pins. And you get a half tone animation in 3D because all of this is still 3D. All right, guys, that's all that there is to it. If you create anything using this effect, please post a link and let everyone see your creation. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more Blender videos. Visit crispy.zone for more info and the free download of Animation Notes for Blender 2.8. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. See you soon. Bye.